Are you experiencing pain in the front of your hip? Is it keeping you from doing the things you love and making your workday intolerable? Maybe it's just simply an annoying clicking or aching in the hip that won't go away. You may be dealing with the hip labrum tear, and today we're gonna cover the anatomy, symptoms, diagnostics and treatment options associated with hip labrum tears. Hip labrum tears are a common orthopedic injury that can occur in a variety of active patient populations. It involves a tear to the cartilage that runs along the rim of the hip socket. This cartilage serves as a means to add depth and stability to the hip joint, and it also acts as a buffer between the ball and socket portions of the joint as they move on one another. These injuries can be caused by either repetitive stress and repeated motions to the joint, or simply through a single acute injury or trauma. Individuals may be predisposed to these types of injuries due to their unique anatomy or build. Additionally, certain sports and even work-related activities may put you at a higher risk for this injury, dependent on the movements and positions that you have to get into with those tasks. When we look at the anatomy of the hip, you can see pretty clearly the shape of the joint and how it resembles a ball and socket. The femoral head, or the top portion of the leg, is the ball. And the acetabulum, which is a portion of your pelvis, is the socket that it fits into. This is a similar structure to the shoulder, but there are some distinct differences. The shoulder is a much more shallow joint, which allows for significant amounts of mobility but it's inherently less stable and more vulnerable to dislocations and subluxations. Whereas the hip joint, it's very deep, and this provides a lot of coverage. This allows for a much more stable joint, but at the sacrifice of some of that mobility. Now, we all have the same pieces and parts in our hip, but they're not all identical in shape, size, and orientation. We all have differences in regards to the size of the ball and the size of the socket, in addition to the exact angle and orientation of how they fit into each other. These differences play a role in our posture. Think of someone who may be bow-legged or knock-kneed. They also influence how we move, such as how we squat, lunge, and perform other athletic movements. This is one of the reasons why we're all not able to squat perfectly to the same depth, and it's not simply just because of how strong or flexible we are. Some of these variances may also lead to increased stress or friction on the labrum with your day-to-day -day and athletic movements, and this can lead to accelerated wear and tear on the labrum. Hip labrum tears can present in a variety of different ways, but there's usually some common complaints that are often voiced by individuals. Pain, instability, tightness or a loss of motion, and weakness are often reported. Pain is typically described as sharp or aching, and it's in the front of the hip and towards the groin. Often it's exacerbated with longer periods of sitting, standing, or walking, and even higher impact activities such as running and jumping. Instability may come in the form of the leg feeling like it wants to give way when you get into certain positions or motions, and that's often accompanied with pain and weakness. A loss of range of motion or flexibility may be experienced for two different reasons. It may come from the labrum being torn and physically restricting how the joint moves because it's getting pinched or stuck in different positions. It may also come simply from surrounding muscles guarding and just trying to protect that area because the joint is painful or unstable. An interesting thing to note though with hip labrum tears is that they don't always have symptoms. Oftentimes people can develop a hip labrum tear and it's unknown until they pursue imaging or medical attention for a different injury altogether. As with most injuries, the treatment for labral tears will vary from person to person. Some will be able to get away with just conservative treatment, while others may require surgery. Typically, your level of pain, your functional status, and your lifestyle are gonna influence which is the most appropriate choice for you. Conservative measures may include activity modification, medications, and physical therapy. Modifying activity is intended to minimize the amount of times that we're aggravating the area. This will help reduce inflammation and allow the area to recover. Medications may include painkillers or anti-inflammatories. Oftentimes, one will be advised to start with over-the-counter medications, but they could progress towards higher strength prescription medications if symptoms persist or are just more severe. If oral medications are not providing relief, the physician may opt for an injection, such as cortisone, directly into the painful area. Physical therapy will be utilized for pain relief and also to restore function of the hip 
by normalizing range of motion and strength. An evaluation will help identify what movement limitations may be contributing to your symptoms and injury, and also what impairments may be a result of the injury. The findings of the exam will guide your individualized plan of care. Let's take a look at what a PT evaluation may look like for somebody hoping to manage a labral tear without surgery. While everyone's evaluation may look a little bit different and will be case by case based off the individual that they're working with, there are some commonalities that you'll find amongst all clinicians and how they approach the treatment and evaluation of hip labrum tears. First off, after you go through your subjective dialogue and you're going through how the injury happened, what types of things are aggravating, how long you've noticed the symptoms, what the types of symptoms feel like, they're gonna get into what they'll call the objective portion of the evaluation. This is when they're doing certain tests to differential diagnose and make sure that they're actually working with a hip labrum tear if you have not already gotten MRI or other imaging to confirm this. Tests that you'll commonly hear referred to are a Faber and a Scour test when you're looking at hip labrum tears. Following that, it's common to go through some different range of motion and flexibility testing. This will give an idea as to how much range of motion you may have lost as a result of the hip labrum tear, or how a lack of mobility may be influencing the presence of the tear or some of the symptoms that you're having associated with the tear. Following range of motion, you'll move into a strength assessment. And this is gonna be a pretty broad assessment, and it'll most likely start on a table where they're doing some isolated manual muscle testing just to see how well you can activate and find different muscles in and around the hip and how they look and feel compared to the injured side and the uninjured side. It's not uncommon to find some asymmetries between how the actual muscle feels when you're utilizing it, meaning does it feel strong, does it feel weak, or does it provoke any discomfort, but also are there any large differences between different muscle groups on the same leg or from one leg compared to the other. Following the table-oriented testing, you'll come off of the table and it's common to do more of a functional-based assessment. So we're gonna look at things such as balance. We'll look at uh, different movement patterns, such as squatting and lunging, seeing how well we can move with regards to range of motion, how deep we can get into these positions. We're looking for things such as provocation of pain, and also if it is related to a certain direction or position that you're going into. This helps further with our differential diagnostics. It also gives us an idea of where are areas for opportunity in regards to maintaining and building strength and stability to help treat this conservatively and hopefully avoid surgery, or if you do go the surgical route, to put you in the best possible position going into that. Physical therapy care for hip labrum tears is often centered around symptom management, which can be a combination of education on how to avoid provocative positions and activities, or how to modify them to make them more tolerable in the moment, and then transition to them back to full participation in the future. They may go over icing versus heating, uh, the benefits or the utilization for over-the-counter medications or prescription medications, and teaching you who is the most appropriate medical professional to direct those questions towards. Manual therapy, such as soft tissue mobilization, dry needling, cupping, instrument-assisted soft tissue work. That may all be performed in the beginning stages of hip labrum tears when we're a little bit more symptomatic. They may educate you on how to use, utilize a foam roller, and this could be something that you can utilize as part of a home program to mimic some of the hands-on care that you're getting in the clinic. Education and intervention based off of mobility and stretching is often key when we're talking about hip labrum tears. Common muscle groups that are gone after are the quadriceps, your hip flexors, the hamstrings, the glutes, and even your core and lower abdominals and low back musculature. From a strengthening standpoint, and we're talking about stability of the hip, it's gonna be a combination of your larger gross movement patterns. Think about squatting, hinging, something like a deadlifting type motion or to pick something up off of the ground. Different lunging and step up patterns are all great ways to target the larger muscle groups of the hip that play a direct role in your performance of activities of daily living, leisure, and work-related tasks. 
oftentimes these bigger exercises are going to be supplemented by some of our smaller and more detailed oriented activities that are going after some of the muscles that play more of a stabilizing role in the hip. Oftentimes you'll hear these referred to as your abductors or your adductors, or maybe your hip rotators. These are active in all the different motions that we do in a daily basis. You just don't always see them working like you can with our glutes and our hamstrings and our quads. A lot of your evaluation process is going to be geared towards figuring what is a safe entry point for exercise, meaning what are we able to tolerate from a symptom standpoint and what are we able to perform from a functional competency standpoint so that your physical therapist can figure out the most appropriate exercises for you, but also the most appropriate dosaging of those exercises, meaning what's the intensity? Are we just using body weight or are we adding extra resistance with bands or free weights or other ways to load this activity? What's our set and rep scheme look like and what's our overall volume or frequency needed to elicit a change and to build strength and to build mobility, but without crossing that threshold of what's comfortable and what's tolerable and avoiding the likelihood of suffering a setback along the way. So if you've been dealing with pain in the front of your hip, that won't go away, it's clicking, it's popping, and it seems to be lingering around longer than what you'd like, or you're having pain levels higher than what you can tolerate, be sure to get in touch with the sports medicine physician, an orthopedic, or a physical therapist, and see what the most appropriate plan of care for you is. Hopefully this video serves as a general overview of what the process looks like and what to potentially expect with care for a hip labrum tear, and keep in mind that some of these will require surgical intervention to formally and completely resolve. Those different surgical interventions carry a whole host of other things that may influence uh, how large or how small of a surgery it is and what your expectations regarding recovery timeframes may be. And that's a conversation that your orthopedic will have with you based off the findings of their evaluation, your individual case, and what they think is most appropriate for you. Hopefully this was educational for you and stay tuned for our next video, which is gonna cover hip flexor strains and the associated rehab.